Hi, yesterday we talked about Kepler's first law and Kepler's second law. Today we're going to get into Kepler's third law, which is where the math is. All right, so I've written it down there. It's t squared over r cubed is a constant for objects orbiting the same thing. I just want to remind you, t squared is the orbital period. Like, so for Earth, that would be a year. Okay. Write that down. R is the orbital radius. Which is the average distance the object is from what it's orbiting. Okay? It's not the actual radius of the thing. So for Earth, uh, it's 1.49 times 10 to the 11 meters. That's how far away we are from the sun on average. It's not the radius of Earth, it's the distance away from the Sun. Okay, so Kepler noticed that this relationship was the same for all the planets orbiting the Sun. All right, and it happens to be the same for any objects orbiting the same thing. So all the planets, t squared over r cubed is the same. t squared over r cubed for the Moon is not the same as those because it doesn't orbit the Sun, it orbits Earth. But t squared over r cubed is the same for the Moon as it is for the International Space Station, because they both orbit Earth. I've set up an example. Mars has two moons. They have cool names, Deimos and Phobos. So they both orbit Mars. We're going to be able to apply Kepler's third law to these guys. Phobos has an orbital, orbital radius of 9,378 kilometers, really close to Mars, and it's zipping around every 7.65 hours. Okay, this is actual data. Deimos is farther away, so it should have a higher period. We're going to find out what it is. Okay, so what we know is that t squared over r cubed is going to be the same for both of these moons. The way I'm going to set this up, instead of writing down what I wrote down Kepler's third law to be, I'm going to say t squared over r cubed for Phobos, do a little subscript p, equals t squared over r cubed or Deimos, so we'll do a little subscript D. This kind of eliminates the middleman. Instead of finding out what that constant equals, I really don't care. All I care about here is the orbital period of Deimos, which will be TD here. Okay, so this is one way of setting up Kepler's third law. You'll see questions like this. In the next video, I'll get into more common examples, but it takes a bit of prep work. Let's work through this one. Check this out. This is nice. The units you use don't matter as long as they match. So I'm going to keep the period of Phobos in hours. And I'm going to keep the orbital radius of Phobos in kilometers. Okay. We're looking for TD, the period of Deimos. RD is given to us right there. Now, just a disclaimer, you're going to be dealing with huge numbers in the denominators here. Okay, so I'm going to suggest, rather than uh, calculating these right now, just keep these as terms and do it all at once. I'll show you what I mean. The left is going to be 7.65 squared, or 9378 cubed. And you just got to multiply by this guy, times. 23460 cubed. Okay, this will eliminate, I think, some rounding errors. So I got my calculator here 7.65 squared divided by 9378 cubed. Then I'm going to multiply. Okay, I'm doing it all at once. All right. Remember, that's squared, though. So I'm going to take the square root of that. Hey, I'll show you how I do a square root. This is exciting, guys. I do to the power of 0.5. Saves me a couple of button strokes. Actually, just one, I think. You probably you could do square root of the answer, which is really useful. Just give me some calculator tricks. Okay. 
so that's 30.3. The units match these units. So that's interesting. These moons are moving pretty quick. The orbital period of our moon is about 28 days. And a day on Mars is really, really close to a day on the sun. So Deimos zips around just over, you know, a day and a quarter or so. But man, Phobos makes several passages every single day. 